Hello and welcome to Talk to Cisco, a half hour program that puts you directly in touch with Cisco leaders. I'm Karen Snell. I'll be the moderator for the next half hour program. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to talk directly with Guido Jure, CTO of Cisco's Emerging Technologies Group. He's going to be talking to us about innovation, how it's fostered here at Cisco, innovation in the industry at large, and he's also going to be talking a bit more about a very special announcement that was made earlier today. Before we get started, I wanted to uh, help you, for those of you who are new to Ustream, in terms of how you can engage in today's discussion. You'll see on the right side of your screen, there is a social stream, and you can send us your comment via Twitter or Facebook. Go ahead and use your own login, or if you feel more comfortable, you can send us an email uh, to our Talk to Cisco email address, which is talktocisco at cisco.com. So without further ado, I want to jump into this conversation because it's very exciting. It's about innovation, a full half hour. I know we've already been getting some questions via email and the Twitter stream is, is going. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. And before we take our first question, I do want Guido to talk to us a little bit more about his role in the Emerging Technologies Group here at Cisco. Guido, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this exciting program and um, take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Karen. So Cisco's Emerging Technologies Group is an internal incubator. We create startups, and we have uh, eight startups to date. We include technologies like telepresence as part of our uh, suite. We have physical security, a lot of different startups that we've created over the last four years. And uh, about two years ago, we ran a competition uh, called the iPrize, and that's how, in fact, a lot of people outside Cisco got to know us then. And uh, we had about uh, 1,200 ideas coming to the system from 104 different countries. And our basic job is to take ideas, whether they're from inside Cisco or outside, and then turn them into billion-dollar businesses. And uh, we have currently, as I said, eight of those. Uh, we have about 700 employees inside of uh, Cisco working on these products. And uh, it's pretty exciting. We are uh, open for ideas wherever we can find them. Uh, we're trying to take the best practices of small startups and big companies. And we're trying to also try uh, create a repeatable process for innovation. So I think that's also part of the interesting thing, Karen, is you know, it's not enough to just get it right once. You really want to try and figure out if you can get a repeatable process for innovation. And that's a little bit counterintuitive. Sure thing. Well, wonderful. In fact, the social stream is going. We're getting some, some questions. One comment we did have is that if you could just speak up a little bit, okay. get our audio nice, nice and loud, and, um, and we'll go ahead and take, take the next question. Um, what did you learn from the last iPrize? So we learned a couple of things. In fact, when we started the last iPrize, we had no idea what would actually come out of it. Uh, we embarked. We used social media for the first time. We were using Facebook. We were using uh, email to communicate with our contestants. And what came out of it was essentially a business unit that's focused on energy. So the smart grid business unit, uh, which is hard at work inside of Cisco, on developing products to turn the nation and the world's electricity grid into an intelligent information fabric. So that's all about saving energy. It's about creating smart appliances that talk to a smart grid. So that's what came out of the last iPrize. This one is from Khaled, and his question is around video. And I'll just go ahead and read it directly from, from the email. It says, as you know, most of the Internet's traffic in coming years is going to be in the form of video documents, and your company is leading the way in delivering video over networks. As you develop your solutions, do you have any special consideration for search on the content of video documents image, uh, and image recognition? That's a great question, Colette. Video is scheduled to be about 90% of all the traffic on the Internet by 2013. So that's coming from our service providers, the telecommunication companies. They're telling us that video is going to be the vast majority of their traffic. And as you rightly point out, video is big, right? It requires lots of data. But it's also opaque, meaning it's kind of hard to search on video if you don't give it good tags or good titles or additional metadata. And at Cisco, we're very interested in trying to make video relevant, to have video and information find you. So whether it's uh, speech recognition, whether it's image recognition, or other ways of getting additional information about video, that's really super important. And in fact, uh, we've already announced a product that does the beginning of that. It's a product called Pulse. And in fact, in the uh, thing I'm about to announce, Pulse plays a major role. So I'll say, uh, without saying a whole lot more at this point, I will say that video and image recognition 
is very important to us, um, and it's part of a product we just announced. I feel like we're really getting some inside information here. This is this is this is really this is really fun, um, Guido. Here's another question coming in. A lot of people have innovative ideas, but only a fraction become successful businesses. How do you look at an idea and decide if it has the potential to become a successful business? Great question. And in fact, uh, for those of you that are interested in knowing a little bit more about how this whole uh, mechanism works, uh, I wrote an article in the September edition of the Harvard Business Review in 2009 that talks about how we evaluate ideas. But it's essentially it's five questions. First of all, is the idea or the market big enough? Uh, secondly, what about the timing? Is it too soon, too late, just right? Is it a disruptive? Sorry, is it adjacent to our core business? Would we, we would we be good at it? Uh, and the fourth one is, can we disrupt this market? Can we do something different? And then the last one is, if we are in this market four or five years from now, how do we sustain our innovation? How do we continue to create differentiation? So when we look at opportunities, Karen, we evaluate all those questions before we take the plunge and before we jump into a new market. Wonderful. Okay, I think we're going to, uh, I'm going to switch microphones with you here in just a moment uh, so people can hear you, which is, okay. is the important I person. As I can, no, I know, I know. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, uh, with the best of intentions, uh, we can have some, we can have some difficulties. Um, so I'll go ahead and ask this next one and I'll come over there and, and we'll switch microphones. What industries or technologies should we watch closely? So in terms of technology, I'll take the second part of your question. The technologies that are very promising to us are video technologies, collaboration technologies, virtualization technologies, and anything related to energy. So those are the basic ingredients that are driving a lot of change. Uh, and collaboration technologies include things like wireless, uh, that you may have thought, you know, where's, where's the whole mobility angle. In terms of industries to watch, there's clearly a lot of stimulus money globally uh, being launched by governments to invest in healthcare smart energy, green technologies. So all of that, because the public sector is putting a lot of focus on it, and as we saw, for example, in the Copenhagen uh, Climate uh, Change Summit, there's a lot of interest in trying to use technology to address some of the major pain points that we have in the world today. So I would look to any area where there's a lot of investment happening, healthcare, education, climate change, as sources of potential growth. And then, of course, the traditional areas like, you know, how do we collaborate globally as companies become more multinational, more widespread. Uh, so I think any of those areas that I just mentioned are promising markets for uh, in future investment. Okay, great. So hopefully uh, with our mic situation now, uh, everybody can hear us. Uh, thank you very much for, for, uh, for bearing with us. Um, here's another uh, question that came in, Gita. What are you most excited about when you think about innovation? So what I'm most excited about is that when you think about what we're using here today, as an example, uh, you, uh, be behind the screen you can't see this, but we have essentially just a video camera. We're plugged into the network. We're essentially a TV broadcasting studio in a box. And you think about innovation today with tools like the, the Internet, video communication tools, social networking tools. Innovation isn't just limited to a particular place or a particular time. You don't have to live in Silicon Valley to be an innovator. We've had some great ideas, in fact, the last time we ran the iPrize from, uh, as I mentioned, 104 different countries. So the barriers to access innovation, to launch a company, to launch an idea, to get something out to market, can be done anywhere. And I think that's the, the, the leveling of the playing field that uh, the Internet and communication technologies have enabled. So I think that's really exciting. What's next for Cisco? What are some of the key innovations Cisco is working on? So inside of Cisco, we're invested in four main technology areas. I would say that collaboration has traditionally been a strong focus for us. So that's uh, telephony, WebEx, uh, video conferencing technologies, telepresence. So all of that is one big focus. The second big focus is video. So video is everything from surveillance to digital signage to desktop video anything related to video, because we think that video is the most natural and the most intuitive form of collaboration. And then the third area, more recently for Cisco, is virtualization. So we've always been in the business of helping to virtualize storage, then virtualizing files or video content as well as part of what we do with uh, service providers. So when you watch video on demand, for example, from your cable TV company, there's a good chance that that's coming across a Cisco infrastructure. 
And more recently, our entry into the Blade server or the Blade computing market, where it's all about virtualizing computing assets. So what's happening is that in the world of IT, storage, computing, network resources, they're all being virtualized. So you have what some people might call sort of elastic resources, where you can allocate resources on demand. And the fourth area is the whole area of energy. So whether it's smart homes, smart buildings, or smart grids, or even, frankly, making all of our existing Cisco products more energy efficient is a huge focus. Not only is it the right thing to do for the planet, but it's also, frankly, an interesting growth market overall to just invest in how we can make other areas more efficient from an energy point of view. Okay, wonderful.